Thanks for showing up to watch this video. These videos are a kind of old hat from my Patreon site, but they're now released to the public, so I hope you find them helpful, and if you do, please like and share them. For the latest, newest daily readings, affirmations, every day, for lessons on how to read tarot, how to enhance your own psychic abilities, to have magical healing gemstones sent to your house every month that angels picked out for you, please check out my site, patreon.com slash terribly accurate. Let's get right to the video then. Hi guys! So we're doing how to learn tarot, right? And last week we did the intro to beginning to learn tarot and that was sort of an overview of a lot of different things. But So this is going to be a little bit boring probably, but the way that I want to do this is kind of go over the very, very foundational basics. So what are the capabilities of tarot? What can it tell you? Can it tell the future? That sort of a thing. Um, so it sort of can and it sort of can't, right? Because the way that tarot is reading energies are um, of what's going on right now. You know, what kind of vibrations or thoughts are people putting out there at this moment in time? And therefore, what is the likely outcome? So when you see things, um, for example, people giving readings for a year's time out, are they going to be accurate? I personally wouldn't say yes. Maybe they know something that I don't, but um, I usually would say anything past three months, it's hard to say. There are some things in our lives that are destined to happen, and they will happen in divine timing, and that's why timing is so hard to tell in the tarot sometimes. So, for example, if you asked a question and you said, you know, will this happen, yes or no, um, if it's likely to happen this week, yes or no, that's probably accurate. Nothing really past three months, typically, okay? So, and this is because of the butterfly effect, because we cannot control what other people do. We only have control over our own lives, and other people's circumstances and the situations they put themselves in can affect ours. So, you know, one little thing can totally cause a domino effect in everything else that's going on. Now, you'll see a lot of things about tarot ethics, you know, if, they, if certain readers will say, I won't read about this, that, whatever, whatever. And that's okay. You can make your own ethical guidelines. You can look up ethical guidelines online for tarot readers um, if you're going to start giving readings to other people. But here's my thought on this. If you're asking questions the right way, then you don't really need them. Is, would you agree? Just because, um, for example, if you said, am I going to die? Uh, yeah, everybody's going to die. Am I going to die of cancer? Well, I mean, it's up to you to decide if you're willing to answer that question for somebody. It's not something that usually people ask because people have a lot of fear, right? Um, they might ask you, will my cancer come back? But things like that, you know, it's always... It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell past three months. You know, is it back now? I could tell you. But will it come back? I don't know. That depends on what you do in the meantime. If you decide that you want to be, if you have a history of lung cancer and you decide that you want to go be like a coal miner and smoke cigarettes on your breaks in the cave, probably, right? So it is what it is. Um, now, one thing I wanted to talk about also, I made myself some little notes here, is, okay, so does it mean it can't tell the future? Let's just go to that. It can and it can't because, like I said, some things are predetermined. They're predestined. Um, but what it really does is give you the likely outcome. So if you ask, you know, how does so-and-so feel about me? Well, I can read the energies of right now and I can read their intentions, what they intend to do. But can I guarantee that they're going to go out and do those things? No, because anything can happen in the next few days that would, you know, throw a wrench in that, different circumstances. Okay, so now what I want to talk about is when you're reading tarot, if you're not doing traditional spreads, um, or even if you are, when cards jump out of the deck or when they flip over, what does that mean, right? So here we are, and we're shuffling, and this just happened a few minutes ago where one jumped right out of the deck. That one wants to be read then, no matter what. If it flies out, it's telling you, pick me, pick me, pick me, okay? Because that's your angels that are helping you read 
tell you what exactly it is that they want you to read, right? Now, if you're shuffling like this and then one flips out this way, okay, and then it flips back into the deck, it doesn't matter what it said. That just indicates indecision. Now, if it's the same card that's doing this repeatedly, flipping back, flipping out, flipping back, flipping out as you're shuffling, it's indecision about that specific matter. It will be up to you to determine how you'd like to read that, okay? Everybody's going to develop their own style as they go along. Um, now, here's something that happens a lot more lately for me too. So let's say you've got some cards all spread out on the table, okay? And it, you've got a card like this, the five of wands in reverse. And there's a card in front of it and there's a card here. So you're reading them. And then when you pick it up, you realize it was hiding something, okay? So you could say that this is the situation right now, that people are not all moving towards the same goal. They're not all working together. They have different ideas on what they want. But the hidden reason behind it, because you see how it's hiding, that's the symbolism there, is that because they've already decided to walk away from it, they're just not invested anymore. So it's not that they never wanted the same things you do, they just don't now. Now you don't have a common vision because they've decided to make their exit already. Whether they've actually done it or not, because it's swords and it's thoughts and it's thinking, they've made up their mind to, and therefore they no longer have the capacity to work with you. Make sense? Okay, so those are some of the things I wanted to go over. Other things I wanted to go over are the treatment of the cards themselves. So we talked about consecrating your cards when you get them, you know, making sure you touch each one and you cleanse each one and in your mind or out loud, you ask that they're cleansed of any energies that they've picked up that are not your own. Um, and then, you know, to fill them up with your own energy. So one thing that I like to do, I do use a candle often. Um, you don't have to, as I showed you in that last video, but as I consecrate the cards, I just kind of run them over one by one. Please clear these cards of any energies they may have picked up, anything negative, anything that is not of divine light and love, anything that is not my own energy, so that I can give accurate and honest readings to anyone who seeks them, right? So that would be when I get a new deck. And it's a very similar way when I cleanse the cards as well. You know, if I'm cl cleansing the cards to give a reading to Stanley, I'd say, please cleanse these cards of any energies they may have picked up from previous readings or from my own energy so that they can be filled up with the energy of Stanley and any, um, you know, so I can give Stanley the accurate and honest reading or the most um, helpful reading to his current place and, you know, in regards to his current questions. So that's how I would do that. Now, the way that you should treat your cards. Some people say you should wrap them up in black velvet, put them in a drawer, keep them away from light. Personally, I'm not really into ritual. I have mine. I don't know. Let me see if I can show you here. All sort of set up in a little container because I like to use more than one deck of cards in each reading. So I like to have access to them quickly. And then it's just easier to carry them around with me as I go from the tarot shop back home and whatever. But how you want to do it is how you do it. Some people keep them in the little boxes that they come in. Although if it comes in a paper box, instead of a harder box, those will get worn out really fast. So you'll probably want to find something to put them in. If you do put them in a cloth bag, um, it'll have to be like a thicker type of cloth because otherwise the corners can get bent. And maybe that's not that big of a deal if you're good at shuffling, but you might end up that you're tarot readings become erroneous just because you're constantly pulling out the same card over and over because it has a nick in it, okay? Um, so for example, one thing that people want to do often is have a very specific tablecloth set in order to do their readings. Is that necessary? Again, personal preference. I don't care for ritual, so I will just do it on a regular table. The only thing that I really have a ritual about is washing my hands. I don't want to have dirty hands touching the cards and getting them all sticky. Um, does it mean that I will force somebody else to wash their hands before they touch the cards? 
No, it's just my own thing. It helps me, much like in Islam, you know, before you pray, they say, hey, make sure that you're clean, that you're coming to God, you know, clean and clear. And I guess I just feel that way about my cards, that I want to have clean hands before I touch them. But it doesn't matter to me if the people coming to me for readings, if they want to touch the cards, look through them, decide on the decks they want to use, or um, cut them, shuffle them themselves to infuse their energy. It doesn't matter to me if they are. So it'll just be personal preference again. And I think that's something we touched on in the first video where should other people touch your cards? Personal preference again. Some people feel very strongly that the other person's energy needs to get into the cards. But I don't know that I believe that. I do a lot of readings for people that never see the cards even, like email readings for people, you know, in Israel, for example. So I'm not sure that that actually matters because energy is everywhere, right? So it's going to be up to you. Um, as far as storing them goes, though, as long as you can just keep them all together is the main point <laughs> because you'll still get the same answers, right? You'll still get the same message, but you might need those clarifier cards. Um, so for example, let's just pull any card out of here. Okay, so for, this is a good example. So the world. You have everything in the world that you could possibly want and desire. You know, it's coming to you. But if this card is missing, let's say that you desire um, wealth. Okay, then we would maybe, okay, you desire a happy family, a love partner, and children, and all of that. So you might get this one. But then you might also get, let's say you want money, because who doesn't want love and who doesn't want money? The Ten of Pentacles would probably show up, right? You'd have multiple things showing up to represent the one card that's lost. So that's why storage is important. Um, but don't get them wet. But duh, you already know that. You're not an idiot. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the intentions for the reading. So should you set intentions for the reading before you start? Like, I want to find answers for so-and-so. Absolutely. Um, but your intentions, when it comes to tarot ethics, I guess this is the one thing I have to say, your intentions should always be pure to give them the best possible information, the most accurate information, so that they are enabled and therefore confident to make the best choices for their own lives. Um, but how do you ask a good question? Okay, so you'll get a lot of questions from other people, or maybe your own questions, if you're reading these for yourself, say, um, does so-and-so love me? Okay, well, it's not a very good question because maybe we're using an oracle deck here, okay? And we get this card and it says, let's see, let me find any yes or no card here. Here's one. Yes. Okay. But whether or not someone loves you is not really what we're wondering, is it? Sure, maybe this person loves you, but does it mean that they're going to A, be a good partner for you, B, be someone reliable and trustworthy, not going to cheat on you, um, going to treat you well? I mean, those are all important things. Are you going to have a happy life with them? Those are the more, those are the things that you're really wondering. You're not wondering whether they love you or not because people can love you and still be very, very cruel to you right? They can still totally ruin your fucking life. So we need to learn how to ask better questions. This is how you become a really good tarot reader. It's not by any magical skill or intuition or anything that you have that is better than somebody else. It's about the way that you ask the questions, okay? You have to get to the root of the problem. So does so-and-so love me? Asking that, what I have, they're not your soulmate, but we already knew that they loved, right? Um, they're a really negative and unconfident person is what I'm getting here. Okay, so how would a relationship be with that person? That would be a next, the next question because it sounds like they have their own baggage that they'd bring into the relationship. So, well, it'd be a codependent relationship that you would have a hard time escaping. Why? I don't know. My brain says probably because you're a loving, helpful person, right? the kind of person who wants to save everybody. But let's see what the tarot would have to say. 
because you wouldn't have any idea or any drive to leave, you know, the relationship because it causes so much emotional unbalance in your life that you can't think or see straight. So, I mean, that's kind of a better answer, right? Than yes or no. That tells you, we, as human beings, anything in your life is not going to make sense unless you know the why. You know, you start, for example, I used to teach nursing and my students were not allowed to have um, acrylic nails on and they'd get really mad and they said, I don't care if I'm breaking dress code. I like my nails beautiful and I want to wear these nail polish colors, whatever. But, it, but they don't comply until you show them a horribly freaky video about all the bacteria that harbors underneath there and how when you're giving vaccinations and things to infants that you can fucking kill them. Do you want to be responsible for a dead baby? I don't think so. And guess what? They take their fingernails off. This is all the time in your life where things might seem stupid, but it's just, or they don't make sense or you don't like them, but it's just because you don't understand the why behind it. So that's what we need to do in tarot. We need to ask why, why, why? Is this good? Is this bad? Explain it to me why. And that's why also a good question when you're doing tarot is what is it that I need to know? So um, if you take anything away from this video, sorry it's kind of boring before we get really into what each card means, is um, a good way to start learning tarot is to pull for yourself one card every day saying, what is it that I need to know? So if I pull a card for myself today, what is it that I need to know today? This right here. So what this is saying is that I've been spending too much time looking at the world at large, and today I really need to focus in on the things that are right in front of me, on the tasks that are right here. Like right here, what is it I need to do? And this is super accurate because I am way behind on my readings. I, um, for YouTube, even I'm making this one, and then I have to run off to work at two, and it's 12.30, I'm running out of time, I need to get my house clean, lots of things. This is like the truest card ever. But then you can look up what that card means every single day. And, you know, that will inspire you when you say, what is it that I need to know? Because sometimes they do that in readings when people have specific questions. It doesn't feel like they have the whole picture, okay? Then you can ask, okay, what else is there I need to know? Or why is this? Why? Temptation. Am I tempted to go take a nap? Absolutely. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not tired. But you know what I mean. Okay, um, what else did I want to cover today? Other people's fear. They say, oh, I'm afraid you're going to tell me something that I don't want to hear. Um, when you're asking good questions, that will never happen. And the reason being is because, okay, yeah, sure, maybe, let's say the answer was no. Does so-and-so love me? No. Oh, I didn't want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> but now what Tara's going to let us do is figure out the next steps, you know, like, why is it important to know this? What is my advice? That's the whole point. We, 90% of reading tarot is confirming what you already know deep inside yourself, but you're afraid to look at, right? Or at least that's what I do. Maybe everybody else's experience is different, but I feel like less of a fortune teller and more bring, helping you to re-examine things that are deep inside of you that you're afraid to examine and then therefore make the better choice, right? So... So in looking in that, what is, in looking at whatever situation, you know, you just read about, what's the advice? And then what happens if I take that advice? And what happens if I don't take that advice? Would maybe be how I would pull cards. So that you can really look at things from a different perspective, from outside of yourself. Does that make sense? Um, let's see. And I think that's where we're going to stop today. And then, so I'm sorry this one is a little bit boring, but these are just kind of those foundational things. And then next week we are going to get into reading the cards in different ways, or maybe we'll start with, with wands. 
I don't know if I should show you how to do spreads or card meanings first. So if you watch this video, maybe you want to leave a comment below and let me know your preference and then we'll do it that way. Okay, bye. Mwah.